Hi, my name is Denise Lewis, and I'm here this morning to talk about Site.ai and look at how to analyze citations and take your research to the next level. So I'm going to cover how it works, how to conduct a search using Site. Um, and then in doing that, we're going to look at the Site report for a particular article or reference, um, look at how to do an advanced search, citation statements. Um, as well as how you would search site to find papers, um, and then some additional things you can do to analyze the search results. Um, we're going to touch on the dashboards in site and how you can use it to basically keep, keep up with any particular new references or results um, for a particular search or just dependent on a collection of papers. Um, also, we can review, talk about how you can upload um, your paper to review all of your sources to see are there any sources that may have editorial concerns, as well as touch on the site assistant. So let's get started. So we trialed site at Wake Forest University back in the spring of 2022 um, and ended up adopting it um, last summer. Uh, so how you access site is simply by typing site.ai, and that'll take you to the home page. Um, site is a fee-based tool um, where you can pay for it as an individual or as an institution. However, one thing about site that's free is um, the site browser extension that you can add on. And when you're going to buy to search site, essentially, like for this particular search, I'm just going to type in information literacy and use phrase searching as well as Boolean logic. So you can use Boolean logic as well as modifiers um, in conducting a search on site or just use keywords. So in this particular case, the search has all, so it's including citation statements and papers. For me, I like to separate it. So if we click on citation statements, that's the basis of site. What it's actually doing is reviewing the full text of articles, book chapters, preprints, et cetera, et cetera. And then in um, going through and doing a text analysis of the full text, pulling out where the, what the citations are and where they occur in the original text. So in addition, if you search just for terms, what site will do is try to find those terms within one or two sentences of one another. So you actually get snippets back um, within the from the paper, original text. So in this case, it's looking for information, literacy, and engineering, and I'm just going to make that a little bit larger. So we have our first result is redesign of library spaces, a collaborative problem engineering students. So you can see engineering as well as information literacy in the text. That's by our own Alicia Hoover. And if you scroll down, it'll show you other resources um, that include those same search term. But the interesting thing about site is that it'll show you the number of citations that a paper has. That's going to be the first piece of metadata in the what looks to be like a little rectangle underneath um, the snippet as well as the citation. It'll also tell you how many supporting citations. So when we say supporting citations, we're talking about where someone has said, hey, I've looked at the research that XYZ did, and yes, we agree with it. Then you can also just see the number of citations that are mentions, where it's just like, hey, such and such did research on X, Y, and Z, but neither pro, con, or anything of that nature. And then the question mark is where there may be a contrasting citation, where someone says, you know, that research done by X, Y, Z, we disagree with it, or eh, uh, there are a couple of things they really need to look at differently. So that's a quick eyeball look at taking the citations to the next level. So we've moved from just a quantitative numeric um, data to actually qualitative data to give you feedback. Um, from this particular page in and of itself, we can click on, I'm going to scroll down and find another article. Let's click on this one. Like developing information looks academic through collaborative design. If we click on that particular paper, this is what site refers to as a report. It'll include the journal that the article was, was presented, was 
present published in, the date of publication, the direct digital object identifier, DOI. It'll, you can click and access the full text as well as click to cite the article. You can also set an alert for this article. So if there are any new citations, um, you'll get an email for that. You can forward this particular paper to Twitter, to Facebook, or LinkedIn. And if you click on the ellipsis over in the upper right-hand corner, you can, again, that'll give you to see the full text, claim the publication, set an alert, search for similar publications, which will be a quick way to find, to deep dive in a particular research area if you find that perfect publication. Um, visualize the citation network or add it to a dashboard that we'll talk about later or export the report. Um, it'll give you the title as well as um, the authors, if you were to click on author's name, that'll take you to additional information um, for that author. You can even click on help understand this report. So throughout site, there are links that to help you um, figure out what is it that I'm looking at, what information does it include? Um, and then you can just scroll down to get um, for it to break that information down for you for this particular report. But if we scroll down, that's where we can see how many publications are citing this particular article. Now, Cite only counts the publications where which have DOIs. Um, and digital object identifiers were only, they first were created in 1997. So if an older publication, someone hasn't gone back and added a DOI to it, um, it won't necessarily be included in Cite. Um, same things for the references and the publication. So it gives you that example or explains to you that it comes from metadata supplied by Crossref through the Initiative for Open Citations or through their automated PDF extraction. So it can deviate from the number of actual references in the document. But this is the beauty of Cite. So for this singular paper, we can see every single smart citation or citation statement um, and where the, ar the article is actually cited within that paper. So if implementing the information literacy in the STEM writing courses cites this particular article in the discussion, as well as in the section, information literacy skills and student learning in STEM fields. Um, if we were to scroll down, we can see um, another paper. Um, so for this particular paper, more than likely cite doesn't have the full text, but we know that this paper cited that article that we're looking at. But again, you can see the papers that site has actually analyzed the full text because um, it'll pull out where the citation actually occurs in the paper and if it's mentioning and what the confidence rating is for it. So from that, if you were to look at the full text of an article that's citing that, you can click on full text, add it to a dashboard or cite it. Over on the left-hand side, um, when you're looking at a report, is where you can even filter um, the citations that you're seeing. You can search the citation statements. You can change the order. In this case, it's ordered by relevance. But if you want it to say the most supported publications, the most contrasted, most for giggles see the most contrasted. <laughs> So in this case, um, there's only the implementing infrastructure that has, you know, there aren't any papers with citations that actually contrast if we do a quick C. Okay, cool beans. But um, you can um, limit by where the citations occurring in the paper, or where it's occurring the introduction, discussion, literature review, or the actual level of students' information liveries, information literacy by the citation types. Um, you can also filter the results that you're looking at, the year published. In this case, we can see that the publications that are citing um, are from 2016 to 2023, the publication types, and the relationship. Is it a self-cite or an independent, um, the authors and the journals? So if you wanted to visualize the citations, you can click on visualize citations, and it'll give you a citation map. And in the citation map itself, the links um, are color coded. So if it's a gray link, it's mentioning blue contrasting and green supporting. So these are all the different types of ways that we can look at and deep dive within sites. So you can actually do a forward and a backwards citation search if that's something that you are looking for. Um, in terms of if we were to go back to our original search, doop, 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 doop. 
want to make sure that we touch on a couple other things. So papers, if you just want to see the papers from your search, um, it'll, from basically just searching information literacy as a phrase in engineering, it'll show you a list of papers by relevancy um, to that particular search. But what it'll still do is pull out for that particular paper, if site has access to the full text, um, where those terms may be occurring um, in the abstract, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the top, you can also filter by author. Um, there's our Amy. <laughs> by the year of publication, by the citations. Um, you can switch it to if you want uh, a result that has a lot of supporting citations or a number of mentioning, or just see, you know, are there any contrasting? The journal affiliation um, uh, in terms of the university or research, the publication type, and you can see article, other book, and preprint topics. If there's any editorial notice, there actually is. Um, two that have been retracted. So we can actually, if we want to see what were those papers, we can see that the two papers that have been retracted are data exploration of common students, human, humanistic literacy, and using artificial intelligence for the construction of university physical training and teaching systems. So that's one of the beauties of site. If you want to search by particular a PubChem substance or mesh category, you could do that. And then there are other ways that you can filter your actual results. Um, if you're looking at the papers. Um, one of the things I love about site is that if you were to click on advanced for a search and you can, um, when you click on advanced, that's where you can actually, you know, create your um, Boolean search query. And then when you click on advanced, you can also see um, what searches you've done prior. And actually, let's see how far this goes back. <laughs> Don't talk about me. Oh, so just 2023, oh, April, oh, okay. But if we head back to our search, one of the things I do wanna show you, if we go back to citation statements, one thing I love about Cite is the fact that you can click what looks on the paper, analyze search results. So you can access that from citation statements as well as all. What site will do is give you a deep dive into the search terms that you've used. Um, and let's actually do that search again, just to make sure that that populates. Thank you. So in this case, it'll identify the number of publications on the topic, the most highly cited publication. Um, the years that um, the publications range. So in this case, all of the results go from 1998 to 2023. Um, who's publishing reliable research in the area in terms of the most work? Here we see Michael Fosmeyer, Amy Evans, Margaret Phillips, woo -woo, um, ELD members of researchers that have published highly cited works relating to the area. So this is papers with at least five supporting citations. The institution with the most cited papers, um, as well as it'll give you snippets about what people are saying about information literacy and engineering um, and insights from the most recently published papers. So it's a really quick way just to get an overview um, of a particular field um, or what research is looking like in a particular area. So the other thing about site I want to make sure that I talk about is the site assistant. So the site assistant is site's answer to both elicit, to essentially to elicit. Um, and let me move my little control bar. So say we wanted to ask, um, what are ways that Electro fluoresces complex cell separation. Now, the one thing about this site assistant is that it's a little bit slow. So while that's still thinking about what does it want to do? We're going to go and look at a couple other things. 
So um, if you were to look at a retracted paper with Insight in terms of the report, it'll tell you if it has an erratum, if it was retracted or withdrawn, and you can click on that particular link to go out to where that information is online. Insight is still thinking. All right, and while it does, nope, we actually can answer. <laughs> that is a pro game. So it explains dielectrophoresis release is a technique used for cell separation, utilize electrical forces. One way that dielectrophoresis impacts cell separation is by increasing input, enabling output. But here's the thing about site. It's not only going to answer the question, and the way that it does it is it actually use um, the chat GPT API in order to query the full text of different articles. But you will see that it has inline citations. It'll take you to the reference that has this information. Um, and then over on the right-hand side, it'll give you a list of all of those references. So that's the one plus about site is that you can ask a question, actually query research, and then find your answers or get an answers with the inline citations attached. So the other thing I do wanna mention about site is the fact that you can um, create a custom dashboard um, either by uploading, you can import from Zotero or Mendeley. Um, you can either upload um, from add DOIs for particular research or research papers that you're interested in. But I'm just gonna go ahead and show you one of the, Dashboards that I've created. Uh -oh. Can't go back. So for this particular dashboard, it has seven articles and it's basically a dashboard from a saved search. So it'll list for you um, in terms of what those articles are and if they have any supporting contrasting mentioning um, citations. There's another dashboard that I created um, in coming digital information literacy for digital coming freshmen. Um, so these are articles, initial articles that I've added, but also I have it um, a safe search setup where site will actually email me any new articles um, or other resources that match this particular search. There are a number of other different things that you can do with site. One of the things is a reference check. So say you've written a paper, you can upload a PDF or Word document of your paper to get a reference check and see, um, are there any editorial concerns for any of the references that you have listed? There's a video to show you how it works, um, but also there is, mm -mm. there's an example that you can click on the link to see. So for this example, looking at the reference check for epigenetic silencing of MIR 4833P, there were five references with editorial concerns from the upload, and it actually includes those fives at the top of the paper. There are other ways that people have used site. One of the things that I love is the fact that the tool is actually changing um, significantly over time and they used agile development. So definitely always check back every couple of weeks or so to see what's going on. And there are emails being sent when there are major updates to the tool. <laughs> 